second leg. And here they come. Spurs on the right in the all-white strip. Wolves in their famous old gold shirts and black shorts. A unique occasion in European football where two famous English clubs contest the final of a European competition. Spurs, the first English side to win in Europe when they won the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1963. And these Wolves here recapturing the glories of their club in the late 1950s when they hoped to lead the way into Europe. A perfect setting on a balmy summer evening. A surprising amount of grass on this good-looking Tottenham pitch. And away from the players to the capacity all-ticket crowd with receipts of £45,000, a record for Tottenham. Coates and Taylor under this one. Taylor giving Coates a nudge in the back, and so it's a free kick to Tottenham. And it'll be Joe Kinnear leaving it, in fact, for Mike England. Gulzine at the far side, Chivers also, the two men that he'll mostly aim for. On their marks now and going there, but that should be through to pass. Oh! And what a misunderstanding there in the Wolves' defence. Fingers pointing there as well they might, because they allowed Gilzine to go in on it. Parks having his say, feeling that he was left unprotected. And Gilzine somehow from some three yards or so, here we come. All those Wolves, four defenders there, allowing Gilzine to come in on it. But even from five yards, he couldn't make it count. Munro, a long ball forward. Derek Dugan chasing it, and England going with him. Gilzine, what a lovely touch off there for Peterson. He couldn't quite capitalise on it. Mullery now to bring it up again for Tottenham. Chivers over on the left. And Shaw turning it back to Parks. Both sides just a little edgy still and no flowing football as yet. England going in and Dugan as well. And these long kicks out by Phil Parks. So once or twice looking as though they might uh, catch Spurs looking a bit vulnerable at the back. Zine and Chivers both going for it, neither getting it. And now Perryman finding Martin Peters. Taken down badly from the back by McCallion. It's got to be a free kick for Spurs. And a rather cheeky one there by Knowles, which is not being allowed in any case because it wasn't from the proper spot. And it'll be Martin Peters hitting one. And Muller is going to He's done it! They watch for Chivers and they watch for England. And it's Mullery who's gone in to get a vital goal for Spurs. Beautifully taken with his head. So there's the free kick taken by Martin Peters. Mullery getting in before Hegan and before Parks. A beautifully taken free kick goal, and Mullery is in trouble. Coates trying to force Shaw into an error, and Coates doing mightily well, but to Taylor there for Wolves. Monroe, Richards, a little layoff there for McCallioc, back again for Richards, and an obstruction that time by Beale on Richards. Knowles having uh, hit that ball away, being told by the referee to go and get it. And take it back. Well, I think that Cyril Knowles has done enough, but now the referee wants him to go back there again. No, he doesn't. He's changed his mind. 
Shaw then with the kick. Durgan's header. And Hegan hitting one, and just as well for Spurs, that hit Mullery. Taylor whacking it back in there again. And finally it was uh, Beale who got it away. Oh, and a great goal! A great goal there! So Wagstaff is the man who scores it. Tremendous left foot drive against the post to make it 1 1. So it's celebration time. Spurs, the first British side to win two European trophies. From the left, Joe Kinnear, Cyril Knowles, Ralph Coates, Martin Peters, Phil Beale, and about to pour the champagne, Martin Chivers.